So now principles of testing, because some people say, okay, yeah, that's good. I can start testing, but testing are guided by some principles that you need to know. And so that when you are testing, you are saying the right thing, you are not saying the wrong thing. And also, you are also obeying these particular principles. So principle number one, I say is that testing shows the presence of defects. It's very, very important, right, that testing does not say that there's no defect. It only shows that there's a defect in the application. So what you are trying to do is that you are trying to reduce the probability of uncovering uncovered defects remaining in the software. That means that when you actually finish testing, there's a sense of satisfaction or sense of confidence. There's a confidence that, oh, this particular application has got, has got increased quality, so also there will be less bug in it. You can actually say there are no defects, but you can testing will show that, yeah, I've got 20 bugs, I've got one bug. I've, I've been able to find two or three bugs, but you can say, oh, this and now I've signed it off. There's no bug. That is not totally right, actually, because that's a principle principle of testing says that testing shows the presence of bugs. It doesn't show that there are no bugs because there might also be bugs that it did not discover. But however, the caveat is now that you've been able to reduce probability of defects remaining in the software. So if it was 100% before, it maybe it's not been you know, reduced to, yeah, I can now say, yeah, if there's any bug, the probability there's a bug in that particular software is now 1%. So, which is, is okay, or it's going to be 0 0.99% or 0 0.11. So, that is one principle. Principle number two, exhaustive testing is impossible. This is, if, I will need to emphasize that it could be possible in a trivia in some trivial cases if you are testing it, some application that are just visible or just small application or something yeah it's possible but in most complex um, applications you cannot say i have yeah exhaustively tested the application i have covered everything sometimes it's not possible because of some com combinations of inputs and preconditions so but if we cannot say that, that I've covered all test cases, right, what do you do? So that's where you need to use the right test design techniques. We're going to look into test design techniques and how do you be able to say, yeah, I've covered most of the required um, test combinations or test cases so that I can have confidence that the application is okay. So, but in some application, bear in mind that you cannot say you've actually exhaustively tested the application, but you can say that, yeah, I have covered this percentage or this particular test cases. And so that's why it's very important for you to design your test case appropriately. It's very important. So early testing, I've mentioned this right now, that testing should start as early as possible. It's one of the um, principles of testing. Defect cluster, this is very, very important, even as an experience or if you are joining an application sometimes. So you need to know that in most cases, defect, sometimes they cluster in some plot. You can see as an experienced in tester, sometimes you might find yourself that, you might find yourself in that situation whereby you would, oh, sorry. you will see that uh, the applications are buggy in a particular um, location or in a particular scenario. So that particular, or when you test a part of that scenario, it only fails every time. Maybe because of who actually developed it or because of the complexity of that particular area. So there's also useful information for you to know that sometimes defect can cluster in a particular place. So that even sometimes when you are, you've got one minute to test, you need to lo look at where you are going to. 
what you are test. So that's very, very important to see. So sometimes you can use this as an attack mechanism to say, okay, I, even if I need, I have only one thing to test, this particular place I need to make sure it's tested. So then, um, pesticide paradox. So, so basically this is saying that if you are using the same test cases all over every time, you are not going to find new bug, basically. So you are going to use, you are also doing the same thing every time. So you need to know that you are not repeating your test cases because it's possible some people will take almost five days to test something that will only take five hours because they are repeating the same thing all over, all over again. And they think they're using different test cases. They're not actually. They're only using the same test case actually in a different way basically. So you need to know when you are designing your test cases, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to give you a, um, even assignment and exercise on this particular um, principle so that you'll be able to understand it also. It's very, very important to know how you design your test case so that you don't repeat uh, tests all over again. So because if you do, you are not going to find new work actually. So then testing is context driven. And to be honest, this is, I tell people, this is where the money is also. It is also not only context driven, it is also financially driven, basically. So, and context driven in the sense that when you are testing an application that is safety driven, you would actually test it like kind of very properly. So for instance, if the application is just used by, I don't even care, it's just normal, or someone just um, desire to create a blog, and it doesn't matter. So, you know, just test it and make sure everything is fine. So, you know, the contest and that's it. Or you are testing a financial application and money is involved. You have to test it properly. That's, a, that's why they said it's contest driven. You need to know the application that you are designing or you are testing and also know how important it is, basically. So absence of error fallacy. So I've, I think this also relates to the first one. So it, so fixing and finding and defect does not help. So you cannot actually say there's no error. So you, so this is also very important. This is also goes in line with um, test um, principle number number one. So and if the application is not usable and it's not, you cannot actually use it, it doesn't meet user, even if you find 100 bucks or so, that application is still not usable, basically. So, and it's not like, okay, I found 20 bucks or 30 bucks or 100 bucks. It's the application is still meeting people's needs. So it's not about finding error. It's not about absence of error or there's no error in the application, but the application should be able to fulfill the user's expectation and requirements. That is what you need to uh, establish basically as a tester, not like, okay, there's no box. That's very, very important. So that's that in terms of um, fundamentals of testing.